show. Nice to see you on your boyfriend, George Strombolopoulos. What an honor it is to be with you. Here we go on our tenth season. Couple good. Keep your applause going. Olivia Chow is in the red chair tonight. Pretty fantastic. I was, uh, I was at a hockey game over the weekend. I went to go see the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Um, it was an exhibition, exhibition game. It didn't really count. They played the Leafs. Didn't count. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I'm just walking in. And who strolls right by me? And his brother wearing Leafs jerseys that both say Ford on the back. <laughs> the look Rob Ford gave me. Not a friendly one. <laughs> Not a friendly one. Thank goodness it's Monday, T-G-I-M. It's the third Monday in January, which means different things to different people. For some, it's the day where you can officially break your New Year's resolution and be cool with it. <laughs> Don't put the spoon and the Miracle Whip down. <laughs> it's just a sad, lonely hallway. <laughs> and while it's tasty and delicious in the first part of that hallway, it's actually delicious the whole way. Who am I kidding? <laughs> it's wonderful. Or maybe today is the day you have your monthly meeting for Game of Thrones fan fiction. I don't know, whatever it is. But what's really important for all people of goodwill, and especially to our neighbors to the south, and some of you watching us right now from America, happy Martin Luther King Day today. This is an important day, an important day to remember. When you remember the words and the work of the great reverend, the doctor, Martin Luther King Jr., everybody finds their own way to honor it. MLK's daughter, Bernice, has urged people worldwide to honor his memory by making today a no shots fired day in support of nonviolence. So you've got about a half an hour. I say, I say we take it a step further in Canada, no acts of violence at all, which would be great. We can do this, unless the Vancouver Canucks are playing the Calgary Flames. <laughs> Shall we deal with today? <laughs> Listen, I, uh, I don't want to know, like, I mean, I was on Twitter and all that stuff. I, I normally am not a big fan of John Tortorella, but I have no problem with him charging the hallway. a boy. <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do. The weather has been uh, challenging this year. Maybe that's what got into torts. Maybe that's what got into Bob Hartley, the Flames. The weather's just so much. But listen, it's an important day today for you. You know why? So I don't know about this website, but my friends have told me about it. There's a site called Pornhub. I'm not sure <laughs> if you're familiar with it. But Pornhub is this enormous... That's the wrong word. It's a... <laughs> Um, it's a big deal, Pornhub. And Pornhub says that of all the pornography that Canadians consume, most of it consumed Mondays in January. So I'd say have a happy Monday, but you already know that. <laughs> and listen... There are lots of reasons why internet pornography is probably damaging to you and lots of reasons, but I understand why people go there when other stats and reports come out. You need to lose yourself in some whatever weird fetish you have. I'm not judging. I'm supporting, all right? <laughs> but no, I read a new report that says the world's richest 85 people, so the 85 at the top, have as much money as the world's poorest 3.5 billion people. 3.5. 85 people collectively control one trillion dollars. I think the only responsible thing to do is just, can you give us their names and addresses? <laughs> I'm sorry, multiple addresses. Can you give us some of those? <laughs> Again, it's another reason why people probably go to pornography. Those stories. Here's another thing that links to this one. We in Canada strive to be the best, right? We want to land. We own the podium, own the podium. Got to be the best. And sometimes we land on bronze. And bronze is also good unless you're here. In fact, first, second, and third here is not a good idea. Canada is now one of the highest consumers of antidepressants. That's right, and it's bugging me, right? Out of 23 countries, we're third. We're third behind only Iceland. Think of how cold it is. <laughs> Think of that economy, right? Like Canada, though, long winters, no sunlight. But we know we're behind, we're behind Australia, the land of sun and fun, and animals that just, like, evolutionarily speaking, makes no sense at all. <laughs> Seriously, in what other country do ducks have babies with beavers? <laughs> oh, it's, it's the Pornado Monday strikes again, doesn't it? So the OECD, Economic and Cooperative Development Cooperation, says that from 2008 to 2012, prescriptions for antidepressants in Canada jumped from 32 million to almost 43 million. 
We're only 34 million people. What's going on? Experts uh, think our doctors are, and I hate to say this, becoming pill pushers. That's it. They just give in to that trend that we're all overdiagnosed <laughs> for everything. That is a weird statistic for us. 43 million for only 34 million. But look, that's one of the things. Something else that's kind of interesting, and I, I do want you to take care of you because big pharma will take over your life, and soon enough they'll be able to probably have some algorithm that tracks your medical records, so they'll diagnose you themselves before something's wrong. You'll wake up in the morning and go, ah, what the, oh, look, Advil. <laughs> It'll just show up. Maybe they'll get a drone to take meds to you, like the Amazon delivery drone. Speaking of, have you seen Amazon's next plan? They've recently filed for a new patent called anticipatory shipping. What that means? They're gonna start shipping products to you before you order them. Because what they did was hire a team of psychics, which I think is, actually no, that would be amazing. No, they've got something called predictive algorithms. So they're based on your wish list, previous searches, and even how long your cursor lingers over an item. They know that. So if it's basically a couple hours later, a washer, dryer, and an Xbox show up at your house. I'm gonna be like lingering my cursor over Lamborghinis. <laughs> and Ducatis. I know Lamborghinis are a bit douchey, but I like them. <laughs> the Ferraris are the Beatles and Lamborghinis are Led Zeppelin, okay? Of course, many errors may be made. Amazon delivery! <laughs> I, didn't or I didn't order. <gasps> he knew. He knew it's the Vladimir Putin story that I wanted to do. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. Those predictive, they're by the way, not a sponsor at all, in case you're wondering. So, all right, so, I think there's a Peter Mansford snow globe in here as well. <laughs> Did I order that? I hope it's in there. Is it in there? <laughs> All right. You got that? Okay. So, we're just 17 days to Sochi. Really excited about this, right? Canada's freestyle ski team announced this morning, but of course, it is Russian President Vladimir Putin doing his best to make the Olympics all about him. So, here's the best part. Over the weekend, he was on the defensive over Russia's anti gay laws and the subsequent reaction to them. But he must have found a copy of the Intolerance Deflection textbook. Here's what Putin said, and I quote I myself know some people who are gay. We are on friendly terms. <laughs> He also did the one thing that all homophobes do. He's like, he said, Elton John is an outstanding person and musician. <laughs> Why is it that all homophobes like Elton John? To be fair, Putin did also say last week that gay visitors can feel relaxed and at ease, but so long as they, quote, leave the children in peace. As he subtly conflates homosexuality and pedophilia. Not that Putin is a guy that cares what anybody thinks. He's 61 and he's shirtless more often than Matthew McConaughey. But <laughs> what's interesting about this story to me Season two of True Detective, Vladimir Putin comes in. A guy like Putin doing this much damage control means that a lot of the pressure that the world's putting on him is landing. He doesn't care what anybody thinks, ever. But there's been a lot of pressure about Russia's anti-gay laws, and this is a pretty cool thing right now. That's your debrief.